Okay, in this video, I want to talk to you about batch normalization. So go the goal is to learn how normalizing the output of a layer can accelerate learning in a neural network. So to understand what I mean by normalizing, let's look at an example. So consider a data set in which you're trying to estimate if someone is a vegetarian from their age and income. I just made this data set up. I don't know if there's actually any correlation, but just, just work with me, okay? Okay, so let's say we have someone who's 27 years old and their income is 31,000 and they happen to be a vegetarian. And then we've got someone who's 52. Their income is 126,000 per year and they're not vegetarian. Another person who's 16 and they make uh, 10,000 per year and they happen to not be vegetarian and so on. So as you gather more and more data and you can plot it now if you were to if you were to plot it with the axes scaled um, so using the same scale on, on either axes we've got income versus age the data since the age only ranges between uh, let's say 10 and 100 but the income goes between 0 and I don't know 400,000 your data is going to be very much flat which is okay, but the vast majority of the variance is along the income axis. So then let, if we were to have those two inputs to a neural network, age and income, age and income as inputs to some neural network, we've got a bunch of nodes in the hidden layer here, and of course a bunch of connections we'd have connection weights here W. Now, of course, the weights can accommodate the, a rescaling of that data, right? So what you'd have is the weights coming from the income would have to be really small, and the weights coming from the age would have to be quite a bit bigger in order to bring both of those two um, input features in a similar scale so that you can start to mix them in the hidden layer and do some sort of processing and intelligence with them. So the connection weights can accommodate the differences in scale, but to do so will result in weights that with vastly differing scales. So when you think um, about gradient descent, that's going to have an impact. So these weights are spanning three orders of magnitude. Mag okay, thank you. Magnitude in our example. So the problem with that is when you when you're trying to decide on a learning rate, you have to choose a learning rate that's small enough so that the small weights um, can still be learned. Um, you don't want to choose a learning rate that's so big that you keep bouncing around your solution for your small weights. So this forces us to use a small learning rate. And that makes us sad. Boo. Okay. So an alternative to this data set, and let's see, uh, I could imagine many of you would try this sort of thing before using this data before feeding in, into your neural network, you might be inclined to rescale it. So you might say, okay, let's keep age in years. We had 27 and 52 and 16, but now we're going to represent income not as dollars, but as thousands of dollars. So the first person was 31,000. This one was 126,000. This one was 10,000. And of course, I still have my output classes. We're not really focusing on the output class right now. It's more about the input. So now I've got income on a, and age on a more similar scale. So I can, if I plot them kind of on a one-to-one -one scale again here, I might see my data more spread out more evenly, more reasonably. Okay, let's take that even further. Why stop with years 
and thousands of dollars, why don't we just come up with an arbitrary scale and, and rescale our input uh, features so that they are um, centered on, on zero and with some predetermined variance. So I've got here age star and income star, meaning that they've been rescaled. And we don't know how yet, but if I choose it properly, my data will can look like this. In, in particular, I'm going for zero mean and unit variance. along each axis. So each input is rescaled so that its average is zero and its variance is one. So this is the idea behind a method called batch normalization. Underline. A quick joke break. Okay. So a boy is asking his dad, Dad, what is ethics? And the dad thinks about it and says, Okay, well, son, let's say I went to the, the coffee shop and I bought a coffee with a $10 bill. And the cashier gave me back the change for a $20 bill. So ethics is asking myself the question, should I tell my wife? Okay, so now consider, let's, let's talk about the, the batch normalization method for training neural networks. Consider mini batch of samples here. So I've got X as the input and T as the target, and I've got capital D different samples. I'm showing them in tuples here. X1 and T up to XD and TD and the corresponding outputs of a particular la layer. So if we feed all those inputs into our network and look at a particular hidden layer, that hidden layer will, will have a bunch of activations, right? And let's call them H1 up to HD, capital D. And for um, since it's, it's a hidden layer, it's actually made up of multiple hidden nodes. So I'm just showing that H superscript D is actually a vector of different activities. It doesn't really matter though, we're going to focus on one of those. So we focus on a single hidden node, let's call it node I. We, have, we feed all of our inputs in, it goes through maybe some multiple layers, whatever, but eventually it comes to this, this hidden node and then we look at it's the value of this hidden node for all those different inputs. And so for x1 as input, we get we get h sub i1. And for the second input, we get a different activity. For the third input, we get a different activity. And finally, for the dth input, we get the dth activity. So it's basically a different level of activity of this hidden node for each different input. What we want to do is renormalize that batch of outputs. We want to rescale those H's so that it means, uh, so, so that its mean is zero and its variance is one. And variance is basically the square of standard deviation. So we're looking for a standard deviation or variance of one. Okay, so the mean you can calculate as one over D times the sum D equals one to capital D of H sub I D. So this is the mean for hidden node I. The variance is basically the square of the difference between the values and that mean so h i d minus mu i squared variance. So every hidden node 
will have its own mean and its own variance. Now we're going to use those to rescale our hidden activities to get new rescaled or normalized hidden activities. So I'm going to put a hat on my H to, sh to represent it's the rescaled version. Basically take our old hidden activity, subtract the mean and divide by the variance. Sorry, divide by the standard deviation. Or there's a problem uh, that if the if the variance is extremely small, the standard deviation is really low, so the the um, input data is maybe uh, there's very little variation in a particular um, in a particular dimension. Then uh, we don't want to be divided by zero or something very small. So we can sort of guard against that by adding an epsilon in the denominator. And so it's often done like this, the variance plus epsilon for some small epsilon greater than zero. Just to, they often call it smoothing or um, to sort of guard against the in, uh, instabilities caused by small variance. So finally, uh, so that we use those rescaled or normalized activities to project to the next layer. So the next layer is getting a rescaled version of those inputs, um, except we can also uh, do go one step further and take those, those rescaled normalized outputs and run them through one more uh, uh, rescaling or renormalization. Actually, it's unnormalization, if you like. We can rescale that output with learnable parameters gamma sub i and beta sub i. So each node will, will normalize its output, but then we'll apply this learned uh, rescaling. So um, the output of node i, which I'm calling y, I know you often use y as the output of a whole network, but here I'm just using y as the output of a particular node. Um, so let me draw a picture of that actually. So we've got the input to node i, we used to have our output h, but then we're rescaling it, we're normalizing it. Maybe I can make that as a box to get h hat. And then we're going to, um, what shape can I use now? How about this? We're going to rescale it again to get y. <clears throat> so this is, um, this is normalization and then rescaling. So this whole process here is batch normalization. So gamma sub i times h sub i hat d plus beta sub i. Okay. So batch normal normalization has a profound effect on the rate of convergence for learning. And you will see this in your assignment. Um, in particular, let's say we do normal uh, learning without batch norm. We might get a learning curve that kind of looks like this. So this is uh, normal uh, learning. With batch norm, you'll find something like this just drops down very quickly. And so you might be asking why? Why does that happen? Well, good question. I'm glad you asked. It's a contentious issue. A number of people have come up with explanations for why and no one really knows for sure. It's not a slam dunk yet, but here's some ideas that are basically floating around. First of all, it helps mitigate against vanishing and exploding gradients. So you can imagine if you're going to rescale your data, um, rescale your representations after each layer, you're going to, it's going to help avoid bizarrely large output currents coming from a particular neuron or very large activities. So it's going to kind of bring, constantly bring things back into some sort of middle ground 
Um, it also helps guard against what they call internal covariate shift. So let me describe what that is. So here's a deep neural network. I, we've got these deep layers down here. We've got input on the left and output on the right. Deep layers down here. Then we've got these shallower layers over here, closer to the output. Shallow layers tend to learn more quickly because um, as with the vanishing gradient, the gradient tends to be bigger towards the output side of the network. And as you work your way down through the network, the gradients often get smaller and smaller. So there's a lot more of a learning signal coming into these top layers. Okay, that's fine. The problem is though, these shallow or top layers learn fairly quickly. They come up with a model to do their part of the solution fairly quickly. But over time, these lower layers can start, can, can learn more. They start to change, they start to shift. And that sort of invalidates the solution that was uh, hit upon in these upper layers, the shallower layers. So changes to deep layers can invalidate the learning of the shallow layers. So then the shallow layers have to start all over again, or you have to keep migrating. So the idea is that batch norm would stop um, the deep layers from, base, from having kind of a, a large shift in the scale of their output, for example. Or, um, so still an open question. So that is batch normalization, something that really helps accelerate neural learning.